Hey guys, so it's actually Friday, but I wanted to reshoot an intro video for this reading vlog considering it is my first reading vlog and I wanted to do this right. I'm not really sure what right is, but I think that we'll figure it out together. So these are definitely more informal than my Sunday episodes, which are not changing. And I wanted to show you what BJ the Book Witch gets up to uh, during the week. So this month I'm getting ready for the spring equinox on the 21st. Um, in preparation for that, I'm making some spell bottles for two of my dear friends. And so I'll kind of walk you through that process a little bit of how that all pulls together. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great week. I mean, you'll see this at the end of it. So I hope at this point you would have had a good week but this has gone too far um yeah happy reading and i'll check back in with you tomorrow which is actually two days ago hey guys good morning it's wednesday as you can tell my day has just started so this first week in march um i'm in the middle of a few different books dark tales by shirley jackson i love shirley jackson but it, it doesn't feel lofty and it doesn't feel removed and it doesn't feel Victorian and I mean I love love Victorian gothic it's great Shirley Jackson has just this flavor of her madness that I just I'm into it so these are uh, a collection of short stories uh, they're really dark and twisted and what I like is that they're very relatable they're very suburban and they're very short so so far I haven't encountered one that's more than 10 pages and some of them are as short as like four or five the one that I read right before I went to sleep last night was about these women who were trapped inside a painting which I used to find a very intriguing idea like I used to watch Blue's Clues and that would be like the coolest thing ever to me that you could just could do into a painting but in this one they got trapped behind the glass like forever so that was unnerving I'm also in the middle of this delightful little book called Hexing the Patriarchy spells and affirmations and exercises um, that are very anti-patriarchy and we're here for that. The novel, though, that I'm reading right now is, well, you, this means nothing to you. Anyway, it's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I'm into this book. The writing is incredible. It is so beautifully written. I'm reading it so slowly because I just want to savor each word and savor each sentence. There was a sentence in there that I read like seven times and it says, the day passed like a sentence. This book is about a girl who makes, she lives in a village in France and she doesn't want to get married and she wants to belong solely to herself. So she makes a deal with this, not a benevolent God, but a God who answers after dark. And she says that she wants to belong solely to herself. So she does. And what that means is that nobody remembers her. The second that they're through having an inter interaction with her is that she belongs only to herself and she is forgotten and so i just finished part one last night um which talks about the way that the deal happened what's happening in present day 2014 ish and what happened in 1714 um when she made the deal and how she is starting to learn the rules of the deal and it is heartbreaking and it's also it's just so beautiful so um i am loving it i can't wait to continue it i'm going to be reading some today so if i finish all of those i'm gonna start the death of mrs westaway i'm just in a really big thriller mood right now so i'm gonna try and get to this one this week we'll see how it goes so have a great wednesday take care and happy reading hey guys it's friday night Welcome to my backyard, to my back patio, and the sounds of a weekend in suburbia. I'm currently doing one of my favorite Friday night activities, and that's grilling steaks. So, in the meantime, I'm still reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and it is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I completely understand what people have been saying about it being too slow, it being this like not super action-packed adventure, and yes that's all true but it's not slow in that it's boring it's slow in that it is atmospheric and you are meant to wander in this world and just enjoy it and look in every window and smell every passing flower and take take advantage and just completely immerse yourself in this world and it is it's so beautiful it's heartbreaking oh my gosh this this book is so rich 
with heartache. It really is. Um, not in this like super indulgent, um, sort of woeful way, just in this very beautiful meaning of life sort of way. Anyway, I'm a little, a little over halfway and I'm just absolutely loving it. It might be one of my favorite books of the year. It might be one of my favorite books of all time. We're not sure yet. All I know is that I'm taking so much time to read this. Um, I'm reading it so much more slowly than I read, than I typically read. Um, and usually that's the sign of a really great book because I want to savor every word. I read a couple of more shorts from Shirley Jackson's Dark Tales and they were really good. They're they're very suburban gothic. Like it's very wife goes crazy from not being considered a real human and her only job is to like vacuum carpets and cook for her spouse and a lot of it is like patricide. So patricide? What is it when you kill your husband? Patricide's when you kill the dad. What is it when you kill the husband? Husbicide not it. I finished a couple of other books last night. I read Sleep Run the Spindle by Neil Gaiman, which was fantastic. It's getting dark so fast. Yikes. I better hurry up. Um, beautifully illustrated, great twist on a fairy tale, and um, just a really great message of female empowerment, as always, and just classic Neil Gaiman, truly. Um, I finished Hexing the Patriarchy, which was a very quick read. It was just a little spell book from um, Arielle Gore and she pulled together a lot of anti-capitalist, anti-patriarchal um, spells, rituals, and prayers and activities and it was a delightful little read. That's my current update for reading. I'm definitely going to finish this book tonight. I'm dying to know how this ends but I'm not dying so much that I am wanting to skim through it or read super fast because I want to absolutely just devour this book. So it's getting too dark to see me and I need to check on the stakes. So check in with you tomorrow. Fable, say hi. So, okay, so it's Sunday and I'm getting ready to shoot my Feb wrap up. I read 15 books last month and this is where I'll be talking about them. Yesterday I finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. It was so good and so beautiful and so sad and oh my gosh, I just... I just loved it and I'm going to be thinking about it for several more days. So I launched into another book so that I wouldn't like dwell in my hangover too much and I immediately started reading Jesus and John Wayne, How White Evangelicals Corrupted a Faith and Fractured a Nation. It is by Kristen Cobes Dume. It's interesting. I also started the hunt the unhoneymooners because I needed I have to read you know, something really heavy with something really light um, to balance that out. This girl, she is the identical twin of her of her sister who just got married and everybody at the wedding gets food poisoning. And so as not to let the tickets to the honeymoon go to waste, the maid of honor, the twin sister, um, goes on the honeymoon with the best man and they have always hated each other. So um, I'm sure something's going to happen there. So that's just Fable has some feelings about that. I have some feelings about that, but we'll see how it goes. For now, I'm going to film my wrap up. Hey guys, it's Wednesday. So I understand it's been like a hot minute since I've checked in, but for the past few days, I have been dealing with a debilitating migraine. Um, I get chronic migraines and sometimes they knock me out for a couple of days at a time. Um, so you haven't missed a whole lot, except I did finish a couple of books. I read a romance in there somewhere. Oh, I read The Unhoneymooners. Um, so that was cute. It was another light and fluffy romance. Um, it was fine. Um, I thought that there could have been a little more chemistry between the characters. They just kind of seemed to, they seemed just as surprised to be there as I was surprised to learn about them being there. My biggest problem with it was that growth of the characters, like the bulk of it took place off screen, like where we couldn't really see their thought processes change. So that was weird. I mean, I would have liked to see that, but whatever, it was fine. Cute, light, fluffy romance did it. I also read Crooked House by Agatha Christie. What I love about Agatha Christie is that she really roots her stories in nursery rhymes. This one was about like the little crooked man who lived in a shoe. No, he lived in a crooked house and he invited everyone to live in his little crooked house. Whatever. I don't know the rhyme apparently, but it was a neat story. Twist ending. You kind of knew it, but then didn't. Um, okay. So anyway, what am I doing here? This is my witchy corner. Welcome. Hello to my witchy corner. So the activity here, the, the little witchiness that I wanted to include in this reading vlog was on spell bottles. 
So the thing about spell bottles is that they can be used for all kinds of purposes. They're really just a way to cram intention all into one place. A lot of people get really hung up on the word spell and that's fine. The people who get hung up on it on a good way really enjoyed like the feeling that it evokes like ooh a spell and then the people who don't like that's like their trigger word they're like oh mm -mm, no too far that's like full-on hocus pocus and whatever they're both fair so if you don't like it that's fine then don't use that word or just call it a bottle or a trinket i don't know call it whatever you want um i call them spell bottles because i enjoy that connotation for example, these are my spell bottles for the first three months of 2021. This was my January spell bottle. So what I do is I pick a theme, I pick a goal, I pick some intentions, I write them down on a piece of paper. That's that piece of paper right in there. I pick some herbs that go along with those themes. Everybody knows aromatherapy works to some degree because bath salts exist and candles exist and lavender makes you feel calm and peppermint makes you feel awake. So to whatever degree you believe that it affects you, that's how these will work for you. It's the same, it's the same concept. You put some herbs in here. I always add glitter because duh. And I also add some crystals because I love crystals, I love gemstones, I love stones of any kind. And then the last thing I do is I pick a charm and I pick a charm that, that sort of matches my intention. And I put my spell bottle where I can see it every single day and it reminds me what I'm working towards. I'm work it reminds me what my goals are for that month, what my mindset's gonna be for February. Very pink, very feminine. Um, it's got like jasmine and rose in there, um, hibiscus and like a little bit of lemon. And here's my one for March, it's like super green and has my little intention in there. So I do spell bottles for myself every single month. I do it when I set up my planner for that month, um, when I'm goal setting, all of that stuff. It all happens right at the same time. And I don't usually do them for other people. The only times that I do do them for other people are as gifts on special days or special holidays. On the 21st is going to be the first day of spring and that's the spring equinox. And the name for that in different you know pagan practices is Ostera, which is where we eventually get the word Easter from and why Easter is celebrated at this time in particular. Not that Easter is a made-up holiday, obviously it has very religious significance, but the reason that it is celebrated at this time is because it coincided with the pagan practices of Ostera, which was to celebrate the changing of the seasons and the equinox. Equinox means equal, which means day and night are once again equal. I love to celebrate Ostera because the themes are kind of similar as far as um secu the secular imagery is the same as with easter it's very like bunny heavy <laughs> like fertility eggs everywhere the idea of like life's growing again you know things are regrowing change moving on new growth flowers are starting to bloom it's very very spring it's very very happy and this being a full year after the events of 2020 and like where they all started. So I'm making two spell bottles for my two closest friends who live here who are also going to be joining for a socially distant austera feast. So first I just wanted to show you what a spell bottle kind of looks like, my thought process behind it and why I'm putting them together and yeah let's get to the planning stage. Hey guys it's Thursday, um, you're here with me in the car, it's not moving yet, and we are going to the apothecary so I'm going to take you along with me. Um, I'm not going to take you inside though. Sometimes they have programs going on in the background. Sometimes they have classes, crystal healing, things like that. And so I didn't want to do anything that would be disruptive. So we just got back into the car from the apothecary. You can see my uh, mask marks. And um, it was a good trip. Lots of good goodies in here. In fact, I have two bags. I just saw a giant lobster on a truck. Like a, the, I saw a giant truck the shape of a lobster whatever orlando is a weird place so that's all for me for right now i'm going to go home and read a whole lot i'm going to read the death of mrs westaway and then tomorrow will be friday and it is assembly time for the spell bottles in the garden so that will be a good time so i'll check in with you later for now it's lunch time and this witch is hungry so see ya Hey guys, it's Friday. So last night I did get a little bit of reading done. I'm still um, almost done with Dark Tales by Shirley Jackson. I am really enjoying uh, Death of Mrs. Westaway. Not as much as I enjoyed in A Dark Dark Wood, I'll be honest, and it took like a jump start to get into this because it starts a little bit slow. And this one really let you wallow in her current situation before thrusting you into that disruption of a routine. 
Um, and I think, I mean, it was purposeful, it was intentional. You really needed to feel her despair in order to understand why she made the choices that she made. But for that, it is a little bit slow before things like start going. And then even when they do start going, it's not like something exciting happens immediately. It's, it feels very old English manner. It doesn't feel as psychological as in a dark, dark wood. In a dark, dark wood, you knew something was up and you knew somebody was out to get somebody and you knew somebody was gonna die. In this one, it just kind of feels like something may have happened, but if it did, it happened a really long time ago and maybe it tangentially affects the main character. And you know that the main character is like in a lot of trouble, but, but not to the degree that like she would whack someone herself in order to get out of it. And then also I picked this one up again. So in here there's, and then there were none, and then Crooked House and Endless Night. So I had read, and then there were none already. I read Crooked House to satisfy the Oracle card. I really like how Agatha Christie's stories are all rooted in nursery rhymes because it feels like you're kind of inhabiting that nursery rhyme. And the idea is that like there's this old man, he dies suddenly under bizarre circumstances. He was poisoned with his eye drops <laughs> and somebody put eye drops into his insulin. And um, he has a very eccentric family that all live with him and all of them kind of had a motive and they all had a motive to frame each other to do it. So it's it's just about figuring out who in the eccentric family did it. And then I'm a completionist, so I couldn't just like put this book back on the shelf without having read Endless Night. So that's what I did. I picked up Endless Night and it is so far about a house that was cursed um, by the inhabitants who were forced to flee the land. And I have a lot of, I have a lot of thoughts on this one. The thing with Agatha Christie and a lot of other writers, but Agatha Christie is a good example. Um, problematic words, problematic language, problematic view, non-native views. So, and then there were none used to have a different title. And even before that title, it had a different title that was even worse. I don't even, I haven't even formulated all my thoughts yet, honestly, um, but that's my homework for the next couple of days as I write my script for tabled content. She has very non-native views and what do we do about that as readers now? So I love Agatha Christie's mystery writing. That doesn't mean that it's free of criticism and other aspects, you know? And so Endless Night in particular really brought that into light for me and gave me some more material to work with. The depictions of the Romani people, I'm assuming Romani people, um, in this book are problematic. So I'll be finishing Endless Night today. I'll be finishing The Death of Mrs. Westaway today. I'll be finishing Dark Tales today. And then I'll be pretty much done with freaking white lady ghosty authors. I'll be I'll be ready to take a break from that and read some like nice middle grades, some Cassie Beasley. I'll just be reading some other stuff for like just a little bit of a break. But it is also Friday, so this afternoon at sunset we will be in the garden and we will be putting together our spell bottles for L and K. So I'm really looking forward to that. Right, so I will uh check in with y'all later. <music> It's Friday night. You're here with me in Neverwood Garden. So like I was saying, uh, while we're out here, we'll probably be hearing a lot of sounds of suburbia, like the birds chirping and more helicopters giving tours of Orlando, uh, the neighbor's dogs, and probably kids splashing in pools because it is delightful outside. It's like 82 out, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it's, it's nice. So we're going to get set up down here and I'll show you how we assemble our spell bottles.
I've enjoyed having you here. I've enjoyed showing you my spell bottles. It feels like I have a friend here with me while I do this. Here is Elle's finished bottle. And um, that's gonna be dandelion elf leaf, which is uh, lavender. Dandelion for choosing to stay a while and root down and become a weed and grow quickly or choosing to uh, float away with the breeze. Lavender for contentment, lemon for that like zest of life and happiness, um, turquoise for the establishment of traditions, and citrine for some sunny happiness. Um, she has her affirmations in here with the paper and Palo Santo here, um, meaning she can take these top two out and she can open it up and read it. She can light the Palo Santo and cleanse her new home if she wants to, or she can dump the entirety of the contents out in a fire safe container and burn them and have a delightful um, incense blend. Um, this is completely up to her and her crystals. She can choose to keep it as a palm stone if she wants. She can keep it with her bottle or separately, but they go kind of well together. See how they match? That was intentional. And this is Caitlin's finished bottle and it is um, deliciously fragrant. She can choose to open it and kind of use it like potpourri. So this is not so much meant to be burned as it is meant to sit because of the amount of oil in there. I would not burn this. Um, and it has a base of cinnamon, which is the strong and fragrant um, herb down at the bottom with a layer of rose petals for that divine feminine energy and snake bite for um, boundaries and protection. You know, um, sometimes when we establish our boundaries, when, when, when that's new to other people, there can be kind of prickly feelings about that. And so snake bite is used to protect the person setting the boundaries as well as ease that um, transition maybe for the person having boundaries set for them. Stones here, we've got some onyx for that like deep dark protection, um, rose quartz for self-love, and of course it's topped with the cherry quartz which is just that bold power, bold feminine power. And then her affirmation right here at the top which is rolled up and she can open it at any time. And hers is topped with a crab charm. So as you can probably tell, it's dark, the sun has officially set. So um, it's time for me to wrap up here. Typically at the end of a little session, they have a little bit of a closed down ritual for myself. So I'm not gonna film that part. That's just for me and whatever spirits are with me right now. So um, thanks so much for joining me. Hey guys, I'm just wrapping up here uh, from filming this week's episode. It's a tabled content episode and I'm talking about separating the art from the artist. Uh, this came into my noggin when I was reading Agatha Christie and I finished Agatha Christie's Cricket House and then I wanted to finish the book. Where is it? It doesn't matter. Anyway, I wanted to finish like the collection and so the last story in the collection was her novella Endless Night and it was hard to get through. Aside from like all of the harmful racial stereotypes, it also wasn't that great of a novella. I wouldn't recommend it. I also finished Shirley Jackson's Dark Tales. Absolutely fantastic. I love Shirley Jackson. Um, two thumbs up, fine holiday fun for Shirley Jackson. I read another romance novel and I was disappointed. I had high hopes for it because it's by Penelope Douglas and she wrote Punk 57, which was my favorite contemporary. I don't know if it was the best contemporary uh, romance that I've read, but it was my favorite that I have read <laughs> or second favorite. I really liked The Roommate. I had high hopes for it and I'm disappointed in it because of the writing, not because of the plot even, like the plot was what it was, but the writing really just wasn't great. It was, and like I was kind of pumped about this, it was about a younger woman and an older dude, and I don't hate that. And I appreciated that they approached the topic with like grace and normalcy, and it wasn't, it wasn't fetishized, like neither one of them were into each other because of their age, which was I appreciated that. I appreciated that on levels that I can't really articulate. There were pockets of this book that became like so derived and it just, it was, it was so unlike her first book, which was so very character driven and rooted in the story. So anyway, on Goodreads, I gave it three and a half stars and I wasn't about to round it up. I rounded it down to three because I couldn't have it in good conscience sit next to 
my other books that I honestly gave four stars to, you know, I just, I couldn't have it. So normally when I give a half star, I round up, but I couldn't do it here because I didn't want them on the same like playing field on my Goodreads. It was just, it's a thing. Couldn't have it. Couldn't abide it. So whenever I read that, oh yeah, and it was called Birthday Girl. I never told you the title. Um, okay, it was called Birthday Girl. Um, it sounds trashy. I don't like how that sounds, but whatever. They meet on her birthday, so, and not her 18th birthday, which I appreciated. And I started, and I'm about halfway through, Circus Miranda. So I don't remember at this point how many books we've covered in the past week, give or take several days. This has gone on for far too long. Um, but I'm here to wrap this up. I'm wrapping up my first ever reading vlog and I learned a lot. One of the biggest things that I learned was that I didn't film myself doing any reading at all of any kind. So uh, that's something I'm gonna work on for next for next time. Um, but, and this is a secret between me and you and the 10 other people who are watching this video, um, I got some really on brand like theme music like background theme music and i'm so excited to put it in to these vlogs that i i simply need to show other things and i need to show reading and i can show you where i read um mostly here in this like bomb ass chair i feel like an authority in this chair it is it is blue it is velvet it is extremely uncomfortable. It just, I sit in it with this air of authority. And so I like to read there. Um, I also like to talk from here, which is why I feel so self-important. For now, this week is finished. I've enjoyed showing you little glimpses of kind of my thoughts as I have them on these books. Kind of not non-scripted, non-scripted beach. <laughs> so um, that's been fun and I'll be bringing you more bookish and witchy content in these vlogs in a little bit more of a laid back fashion. So thanks, take care, and I'll see you in my next one. And happy reading.